Okay. You can go when you're ready. Not so fast. Slow down. She's got
Uh, we had eight of our members at the Sunday School this morning. Uh, great uh, time watching this uh, awesome new video series, The Chosen, which uh, tells the story of the disciples in a way that we've never uh, seen it before. It expands, actually, on the uh, Gospels and uh, the acts of the apostles during the uh, lead-up to uh, Jesus' crucifixion uh, during his ministry. Uh, so tomorrow evening we have our administrative council meeting at 6 o'clock. Uh, anybody in the congregation that wants to be a part of determining the future of the church is welcome at that. Um, and uh, we encourage anybody who would like to attend to do so. On Wednesday we'll have uh, bell choir and choir practice. And then next uh, Sunday we're already back to uh, our monthly uh, luncheon following the service. And that's Palm Sunday too, so kind of a special day for us. Um, and then on the 9th, there's a sunrise service at Spring Bank at 7 o'clock. If anybody wants to get a real uh, early start, of course, that's one of the most important religious holidays in our year uh, on Easter. And then on the 20th of April, we have our sausage truck uh, here as a way to continue our ministry. Uh, people can stop by here and buy sausage and carry it out if they'd like to uh, go to our basement where we'll have uh, uh, tables set up. We can continue the ministry there. And uh, also we have a sign up to have people from the congregation here uh, to uh, help out downstairs. Initially people will help them set up tables, but if you're not somebody that sets up tables, you can be here a little bit later just to be a friendly voice to some of the people in the community that decide to eat here. Uh, want to thank for the uh, continued donations to our uh, church supplies. And at this time, I'll ask if there are any other announcements that we need to make this morning. Okay, hi. I would just like to extend a thank you to the congregation for your support and also for the uh, financial donation that allowed Chrissy and I to go to the Bell Conference in South Bend, Indiana. And as soon as my computer is up running again, I will have pictures up just so you can see what we did while we were there. And I thank you again for your support. Okay, any others? All right, our call to worship this morning is hymn number 297. It'll be on the uh, wall, and it's in the hymnal Beneath the Cross of Jesus. And I'd like everybody to stand as able to sing this song.
So the uh, point passer will hit our joys and concerns. And, uh, you notice we moved a few things around in the bulletin, but everything's on here. We are going to do. Thank you, Bob. It's good to see all of you. I think the microphone's turned on. Everybody can hear me that wants to hear me nod your head. Okay. Now, from prayer concerns, uh, we have Pete, who's in the hospital. Uh, Debbie had eye surgery. Uh, my wife is under the weather in general. And uh, Joyce, from out at Springbank, is also kind of, she's taking it easy. She has a surgery coming up, so she's kind of avoiding all of us who might be coughing or have runny noses or sore throats. Uh, any unspoken requests, show of hands. Thank you. Anybody wish to lift up? We have we have Ron who's under the weather. We have Rob who's working. Working. Oh, that's a pretty good excuse, really. Yeah, it's still it works. Still yeah. on respiration. Yeah. Sometimes people go, you know, even I have to work on Sunday if you think about it. <laughs> so uh, we also have Reva who's got a knee problem, and so Chuck has been assigned to pamper her, so that's where Chuck is. Did anybody wonder what happened to Chuck? Yeah. And of course, I'm praying for Connie. You're, you're okay though, right? She's okay. And uh, we have some, uh, Sarah's here. Thanks, Sarah, for showing up. And uh, Ar Arla, Arla's here. Thank you for being here. Uh, oh, that's Jen. I was trying to figure out. I can't quite see Jen. She's hiding behind a music stand. Anybody wish to lift up a spec? Oh, okay, way out there. I have a, I have a list. You have a list? Yeah, my neighbor Barbara is still having some health issues. Um, a, new, a friend of mine just was admitted into the hospital yesterday, sick, Jonna, and then other people and friends, Amanda, Colleen, Joe, and Roger. Some serious health concerns and others just whatever. Well, we'll remember all of those. Barbara, Jonna. Amanda. Amanda. I know I left out a D and an A. Okay. And Colin, 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 Colleen, 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 Joe, Joe, Rock. Okay, I got most of them. Thank you. And we also want to be praying for the uh, sausage truck ministry to the neighborhood. I think it's going to be a real fun time. How many are looking forward to the Hama Mama sandwiches? And all they the fixing. Cream puffs. Oh, yeah. Cream puffs, yes. Yes. And we do need some, we just need some people that are willing to come, spend an hour or two, and help us and make sure that everything's okay here in the building. If people want to come inside, we're going to offer that. That'll be a part of how we introduce ourselves to many people that say, you know, I like to go to that the sausage truck and pick things up, but if I have to drive 11 miles to get back home, if I can eat right there, that might help <clears throat> demonstrate to our neighborhood, <coughs> all the people around us, that we are alive and well, and that we are welcoming. I've always felt welcomed here. Um, I survived the first year, I'm in the second year. Uh, that says something for all of you tolerating me that long. You'll be on the bench. Hmm? You'll be on the bench. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I've always lived my life that way. Uh, when they didn't have a, I was talking about this earlier, when they couldn't find anybody to coach the baseball team at the high school I worked at years ago, uh, I said, I'll do it if you send me off for some training. 
So anyway, I went to training and came back, and uh, luckily, uh, I took a, a 200 team to 500 that first year, which is, how many baseball officiados do we have? A few? Yeah. Paints fans? Yeah. Well, you know what it means to take a 200 team to 500. So I enjoyed baseball. I enjoy the coaching. Uh, I never, I was never, the schools that I attended, all the six, two people, young men, were the baseball players. All of us who were under six, two, were the water boys. <laughs> so, anyway, I like the game. My son, who's six, two, plays. Uh, but anyway, uh, moving on. So, for our concerns, Nancy, I was just waiting for you. Do you have a list? No, I just have one. My hairdresser's having some tests. First name? Tawny. Tawny. No. Tawny. T. Well, you know I'm deaf and dumb about you. No, I know. I guess. T-O-N-I-A. It's a whatever. Tawny. 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 We'll be praying for your hairdresser. We'll pray, pray for your hairdresser. You Whatever's going on, the Lord will intervene. Yes, and he'll give her the answer. Because we just, we, we know, the Lord knows, the Lord knows what's in your heart. And that's what's important. And I'll help you out, Pastor. It's T O N N I. Because she is the mother of my yes, daughter. Yes, I know. I know. <laughs> and, and, and I've been reunited with another family member at first that I didn't know I was sick with the day. Like she's old. Yeah, this reminds me of Arcadia, Florida, where every other person is your next door neighbor's brother in law, sister in law, cousin, yeah, yeah. or That's second true. wife twice removed. That's yeah. Same in Chillicothe, yeah. yes. And of course, every way that's related to Henry Wade is my cousin of sorts. Does anybody here remember Henry Wade? I didn't think so. Not even, not even Don Newman, who's not here. Uh, Henry Wade was the manufacturer of those uh, harvester units that hooked up the steam engines. He died in 1880. He's the brother of my great grandfather. So uh, all the waves that come from that direction are some kind of code. Any other prayer concerns? Mark. Where is he? Mark. Well, where is Mark? He's at home. He's a lot going on. Okay. He had a lot of fun on the trip, huh? Yeah, he did. Okay. <laughs> Pray for Mark. Yes. Buddy. Okay. Our oldest son, Cam, C-A-M, and Caroline, are awaiting the adoption of their baby, their daughter. Um... The baby is measuring small, so she has to go in twice a week for what's it called again? Uh, ultrasound. Um, we just pray that everything goes well. Pray that everything goes well with the baby and the adoption and all of that. Yes. Okay, we just turn it over to God and we're ready to go. Yes. Okay. Uh, she's doing May, nice, so. Okay, well that's close. It's close. And I have a sister that's approaching retirement from the VA, so uh, pray for my sister also. Any others? Pastor. Oh, Bill. Uh, oh. Remember Anna and Kay and Suzanne. Okay. okay. I'm just going to ask for prayer for my for my husband, Dick. That's right. He spent the weekend uh, doing doing side activities with Mark. And on, on that note, I will ask for prayer for Nancy, who's going to help with the offering but doesn't know it. <laughs> You're okay. The little the uh, microphone curled around under my lapel. So I 
during the prayer, I will ask that the offering be blessed. And so uh, Nancy's helping with the offering and anybody else. Let's not get the people in the south. The tornado uh, victims, yes, we need the storms, the wind, uh, there's lots of trees down, 70,000 people in uh, Ohio are without electricity this morning. Do, do all of you have electricity? We do now. We do now. Yours was off for a little while. Ours was off now. Yours was off for a little while too. Okay. Well, let's, pray. oh, Rick. Let's pray for uh, Rosie, you used to come here. She's in the hospital. Right. So, anybody else? Let's unite our hearts and go to our Heavenly Father together. Heavenly Father, we know that you're here with us. We know that you hear every voice. You've heard every name. You know every special need that we've lifted up. And Lord, we trust you to intervene in those situations for health concern, for surgeries, for depression, and people that are just struggling. Lord, we know that there's a many that are affected by the tornado, many deaths. And Lord, we know that there's a lot of people that are without electricity. That's very stressful also. Heavenly Father, just lead and guide us to be the disciples that we need to be in the name of Jesus, I ask you to bless the offering mightily, and all God's people said together, Amen. selection, I would just like to say, when Chrissy and I went to uh, the Bell Conference, this is one of the Bell numbers that we worked on, and it was just beautiful, and hopefully our Bell group will share it with you at a later date. But the one thing that we found out, it was based upon an old hymn, and it was written quite a few years ago, 
but it was be beautifully designed for the lemon service in the lemon season. So we'd just like to share this with you today, and it's called the lamb. Saying to them, 
I am going to put breath into you and bring you back to life. I will give you sinews and muscles to cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and bring you back to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been told. While I was speaking, I heard a rattling noise, and the bones began to join together. While I watched, the bones were covered with sinew and muscles, and then with skin. But there was no breath in the bodies. God said to me, Mortal man, prophesy to the wind. Tell the wind that the Sovereign Lord commands it to come from every direction, to breathe into these dead bones, and to bring them back to life. So I prophesied as I had been told. Breath entered the bodies, and they came to life and stood up. There were enough of them to form an army. God said to me, Mortal man, the people of Israel are like these bones. They say that they are dried up without any hope and with no future. So prophesy to my people, Israel, and tell them that I, the Lord God, am going to open their graves. I am going to take them out and bring them back to the land of Israel. When I open the graves where my people are buried and bring them out, they will know that I am the Lord. I will put my breath in them, bring them back to life, and let them live in their own land. Then they will know that I am the Lord. I have promised that I would do this, and I will. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we prepare for the message about dry bones, uh, let's lift our voices together and pray the way Jesus taught the disciples long, long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, I'm going to uh, deviate slightly, and I'm going to go to Deuteronomy 6 today. For centuries, when people of the Jewish faith, or the Hebrews, gathered together, they would open, whoever the leader at the synagogue or at the temple, they would open with the leader taking his prayer shawl and reading off the uh, hymn of the prayer shawl, and here, this is what they would read. Now, of course, I'm going to read it in English because I don't speak much Hebrew. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is your God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Perhaps some of us have been around Jewish people at their homes. I have a number of times. And they normally have on their uh, doorpost coming into the house a little metal tiny metal box about the size of my finger and inside of that little metal box is a prayer and sometimes it's that same prayer I just read to you Ezekiel very interesting prophet I will share with you that Ezekiel was hauled away into exile from Jerusalem in the year 597 B.C. 
That's the 6th century B.C. So, that's 2,000, approximately 2,600 years ago. And when, we, when you heard Bob read from the scriptures, Ezekiel was a prophet that was well recorded. His visions, his oracles, his proclamations were well written down through, throughout that whole time that he was a prophet. Now, four years after he was in Babylon, and he actually lived a little bit to the south and the west of Babylon, he was called by the Lord in the ministry. So all of the chapters of the book of Ezekiel can be divided up into three different sections and three different studies. And it takes a lot of coursework to go through Ezekiel. It's a complicated book. He is a man that's called of God, and when God grabs hold of him, in this particular Bible, verse uh, chapter 37, verse 1 says, The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. <coughs> God reached and grabbed hold of Ezekiel and took him away in the spirit to a valley that was filled with dry bones. Ezekiel is one of those spiritual prophets that is in touch with God and is moved by God and his, his entire being is transformed by the Lord touching him and carrying him away. Now, these dry bones, how did they get there? There is, there is one suggestion in the scriptures that we read through today that these bones were left there after a great battle. Now, these bones are just bones. And... Ezekiel's looking at this devastation. I, I can only imagine the emotional feeling that any of us would have. And as a good Jewish person, these, these soldiers or people, no matter what happened, they're, they're not buried. They're just laying in the sand. Or that's the way my imagination sees it. There's, it's kind of, kind of uh, eerie feeling when I read this and think about it. And when God told uh, Ezekiel to prophesy, he, he wasn't sure how this was going, what was going to happen. And then the Lord said, "Well, there'll be, there'll be." Muscles, there'll be skin, the, and then you'll have to call for the breath of God. All of us who are filled with the Holy Spirit are filled with the breath of God because that's a part of the Holy Spirit. And in Genesis, when God formed a human out of the clay, the mud, the one thing that's important to all understandings of the book of Genesis and the creation of people is this. God breathed into that clay the spirit, the breath of life. Now, you're probably saying, well, Ezekiel, Ezekiel the prophet, carried away by the Lord, prophesied about how the how the graves were going to be open? Well, we, we've heard that before in the book of Revelation. We've heard about the graves being opened when Jesus was crucified on the cross. We, we've heard that. We know that that's going to happen. King Nebuchadnezzar called people away from Jerusalem, and they were, they were depressed. They would have been held in slavery, you know. 
They had their work. King Nebuchadnezzar called them away as the spoils of war. In your imagination, think about how any of us might feel if a, another nation conquered us and then took away all the young people to work somewhere. It would be depressing. It would be disturbing. So, like many Old Testament prophets, Ezekiel warns the people. He's kind of a watcher in this situation. You know, Ezekiel, according to his own book, was kind of a homebody. He was sort of a recluse. He, didn't, he, he wasn't anxious to get out and go preaching ever all over the place. And sometime after his wife passed away, he kind of he kind of fell apart. He just sort, sort of vanishes off of out of history. We, we, don't even, we don't even have a record of what happened to Ezekiel at the end of his life or his ministry. But luckily, the scrolls that were transcribed were saved. They were rescued. They weren't destroyed. And we know that Ezekiel said, all disobedience to God is sin. And when a person sins, there, there, there are consequences. That was the Hebrew way of looking at the world. Now, we look at the world, we say, well, the consequences of sin is this. We must repent. When we know that there's sin in our lives, we ask Jesus to forgive us. All of you nod your head if you're still with me. No, we, have, we repent. We say, Lord, forgive me. I, I didn't mean to hurt my brother or my sister. I, I didn't mean to cause that problem at first. Then it was sort of fun, so I did egg it on. Forgive me. Uh, I mean, that's, that's kind of the way it goes with most of us. Most of us get in trouble by talking. Our tongue is the, is the big problem for most of us. But this deep spiritual connection that Ezekiel has is also an important part of understanding Ezekiel and his ministry. And we're just studying one, one oracle. That's what these kind of little, little things are called. I mean, Bob, the subtitle was The Dry Bones. Well, this is about the dry bones and how Israel will be restored. Now, we've all lived long enough, and to this day, we know that political Israel has been partially restored, for sure. They don't have a king anymore. I'm not sure how that's going to work out for Israel. But they also, they don't have the entire geographic uh, neighborhood. Yeah, it's me that's doing that, Jake. Sorry. When you hear that scratchy noise, it's just me wiggling around. Don't worry about it. If it's too annoying, I don't know what we'll do. But anyway... Leave my microphone on for now. So this Bible wants to slip and fall off of here, so I can't do three things at once. Sometimes I actually have trouble doing one thing at one time. But anyway, the breath of God, know that that has to do with the Spirit. Ezekiel is filled with the Spirit of God. We know that his uh, personal life was a mess. Uh, <laughs> We know he wasn't the most dynamic of getting out to preach, but his recorded oracles are, are incredible. It's a wondrous book to study, but be prepared. You've got to do a lot of reading and maybe even do some research. So, he warns the people, if you keep sinning, God's going to get you. That was the Old Testament look at sin. Stop sinning. That was the whole thing. And if you don't stop, God will send some kind of calamity that was cause and effect religion for those ancient times. I thank God today that we have Jesus Christ and that cause and effect religion is not what we're about. We are about the forgiving grace of the loving God sending his only begotten son Jesus Christ to see that we are saved and to lead us and guide us. Now, 
We need to study the Old Testament. And when you study the Old Testament, you, you almost need one of those headlamp flashlights like my uh, wife gave me for Christmas. You need to shine the light of Jesus onto the study. Ezekiel, 2,600 years ago, these words were penned. And they survive pretty much intact. If you could read Hebrew, you could read it. I don't read Hebrew. I can look up things. But, uh, you know, we are the people of grace. We are the people that understand the love of God. And we know that these graves are going to open. We've heard that in the book of Revelation. We've heard John the Revelator go on the other side of the veil, just like Ezekiel. These bones are pulled together, and they live. And the breath of God empowers them. The people of Israel, they have a land today. Everybody say, thank God. Thank God. Yeah, I thank God that the people of Israel have a land today. Is there unrest there? Yeah. Wherever there's the struggle between good and evil, there's going to be conflict well up. We understand the people of Ukraine. They're, they're engaged in war. Home, their homes are being destroyed. Their power plants destroyed. Their infrastructure, the water, it, it, it's a mess. We don't understand because we don't think destructively. We think according to the love of Jesus Christ. Everybody say amen. amen. Yes. Remember Ezekiel, the watchman. His story is about repentance and stop sinning or there'll be problems. And when God's people turn from their sin, those bones are brought together and the breath of God's in them. Let us pray. Eternal Lord, we give thanks that you restored those people long, long ago. We give thanks that you still speak to our hearts and to the Holy Spirit indwelling each of us through Ezekiel's prophecies. Let these oracles of ancient times touch us, guide us, strengthen us, and keep us courageous disciples always. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. So our closing hymn is the exclamation to the prophecy of dry bones, number 370, what those bones and all of us have, victory in Jesus. Let's all stand.
peace and serve the Lord with the strength of a prophet. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.